This is Kotlin Conversation, where we're talking to just a few of the amazing guests and speakers here at Kotlin Conf 2024. I'm Gwen Dow, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Maya Hrutipas. Maya, thank you so much for joining me. This is your first Kotlin Conf, right? It is. Uh, how is it so far? I mean, I, we kind of just had the keynote just to kind of... Yeah, so I'm super excited. I'm trying not to bounce up and down, but I'm so <laughs> excited. So it's been wonderful. I think the, the nicest thing for me is meeting people in person that I've spoken to online, yeah, but then have a chance to really just speak to people in person. So that's lovely. Yeah, we were saying this yesterday that we've kind of been orbiting each other a bit, yeah. kind of like two like star like two planets that haven't like been able to meet. But it's so yeah. great to meet you in person. Yeah, uh, Maya, for the audience, what do you do? And I guess what's your backstory with Kotlin? So I'm an Android engineer from a long time. I think my first mobile development was in 2010. And I probably was using Eclipse and Ant initially in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as we could use Kotlin, I started sneaking in Kotlin, as everyone did at the time, in tests. <laughs> and then I remember the Google I.O. where it was announced and everybody was just saying, yes, Kotlin's on Android now. And so it's been like many years. I, I, that's still my t one of my top five. Google I.O. Yeah. announcements, like I'm very basic, I, I, I love Kotlin as well. And I love what you said about the whole sneaking into tests. I feel like we all did that. Yeah. Like little ninjas just like Kotlin, Kotlin, yeah. Kotlin, Kotlin, People saying, no, you can't have Kotlin in the app. It's going to put X amount of megs onto the APK. I said, well, and then typically what happens once you start coding Kotlin, mm -hmm. when you go back into Java, it's like my brain can't remember the Java syntax I, I, anymore. I have that too. It's just Kotlin brain from now on, which is not necessarily a bad thing. No. So if you have the test, then people read the test, and then they have to go back into their Java world, and then they can't, right? <laughs> I, I really can. It takes me a good like day or two to kind of get back, back into, into the, the kind of swing of things. My, so Maya, I'm actually really excited because I know that there are probably too many of us Android devs in the Kotlin, at, at Kotlin Conf in general, but your talk is a little bit different. You're not talking about Android or Compose or anything like that. What are you talking about? So for me to love my talk, I need to mm. be excited and intrigued by the topic. Last year they announced Kotlin Notebooks. Right, that's right. And so. I know nothing about notebooks. I'm not a data scientist. I've never used the Jupyter Notebooks, and I thought, huh, this is new, this is interesting. And so I'm exploring um, Kotlin Notebooks just from seeing what it's like. Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, just for the folks out there who also, I am not a data scientist, but can you kind of briefly describe what a notebook is as opposed to being, you know, the paper fill thing that. So if you think about a REPL okay. mashed together with a README. Oh, so REPL, REPL, the REPL where you can like interactively code and uh -huh. get run code and yeah. you mash that together with a README, oh. which gives you markdown. Okay. Uh, and then there's sections of the notebook that have code in it and sections that can have markdown. And then the notebook will look at each cell mm -hmm. and render whatever's in there. So if it's code and it's got an output, it'll render that. Or if it's markdown, it'll render that. Oh, brilliant. So it is just like a, a mark, um, like almost like a markdown editor, but with like, coding and like yes uh, and then it's got you can you can turbocharge it by like pulling in other libraries and pulling in your own code mm -hmm. so it's really a very flexible nice place to play around with things oh so so it, I mean, especially as an android dev i know we're used to a very specific environment yes so did you find the notebook was a cool place for you as just a just as someone who loves engineering to just play yeah around? so i found actually that it changed my process quite a lot really huh. so like initially from an Android engineering point of view, I would like think up an API and then, or think how I would build something and then expose an API. In the notebook environment, I didn't have some code to do some stuff. I started coding how I wanted the API to be mm -hmm. as a consumer of the API and then went backwards and wrote some classes or wrote some, some functions to match what I wanted it to do. So it's like it was flipping itself on its head because I was coming from a point of like, I can dream about the best solution first, like an experiment with the best solution, and then work backwards to what the code needs to look like. Oh, brilliant. So, um, uh, and, and the topic that, so your, that your talk is kind of about this kind of exploration and experimentation. It's about this exploration. And so to do that, I chose a topic that I haven't looked at for many years, and it's fractals and L systems mm -hmm. and drawing things on screen. Um, because I wanted to pick something which I could explore again. Yeah. And so it's again, it's not an Android topic, it's something completely off the wall. It's like just honestly something that I wanted to play with. Mm -hmm. And so that's what my talk is about. So L trees and, and fractals, like how are they I mean I mean I really want you to see my 
Yeah, so no spoilers. No spoilers, but just generally speaking, like what is the relationship with, say, I don't know, mathematics, the fractals and the and the and else? Yeah, so fractals are something that come from geometry and mathematics. Mm -hmm. And there's certain ways to see what they what they are and when they're fractals. Mm -hmm. And our systems is an algorithmic tool to um, see how plants grow. Oh, really? That can produce fractals, mm -hmm. like fractal-like plants. And so I've been I messed around with those and managed to get them to display. And yeah, I don't want to I don't want to spoil it too much. But, but, yes. but that is fascinating because it was were they also systems were created by I, d I think I did Wikipedia this the okay. other night because I was like getting ready. Yeah. That they were created by a biologist, a botanist. Botanist, yes. Amazing, amazing. Botanist, so now, yeah. Lyndon Meyer was. The Lyndon guy. Meyer, so that's why they're called yeah. Lyndon yeah. Meyer system. But he's a botanist. Yeah. But I love that because there's the, so there's this like uh, concept or this tool developed by a botanist, and now in 2024, you, an Android developer, are yes. using a notebook to kind of explore explore how to use that algorithm and to see what it can do. And for, well, first of all, understand how it works, code it up, yeah, so that I can understand how it works and then use it to do something in the notebooks. Yeah. Do you think that mm -hmm. it? That in general, just for any you know applications engineer or someone kind of working at far more level, would you mm -hmm. recommend to them that hey, like if you want to kind of experiment, kind of think of like or explore different ways of thinking about like you know programming, would you recommend kind of what you did? Like yeah, so I think it's got a specific niche. So say for instance you have data, mm -hmm. or you have an algorithm that you want to implement but you're not quite sure what you want. If okay. you don't know what you want yet, yeah. you can be in that system, in the notebook, and make notes along the way, right? Like, so you can try something out, you can tweak it, you can change it, and you can try it out along the way. So it's really good for uh, firming up what you want. It's like, if you don't know what you want yet, mm -hmm. but you know, it's you've got a vague idea, it's got to do this, or you, you have data that you don't understand yet, and you don't know which parts of the data you want to use yet, um, it's a good place for being in that sort of in-between time when you're not quite clear, but you're not at the point where you can start writing documents about it, but you want to try and code and see what it looks like. Oh, I like that. Almost kind of like a sandbox, but a little bit more... Yes, like a sandbox. Maybe. And I think the other possibility for this is that um, if I need to explain something to you, I can tell you like that, but I can also show you, say, okay, this is what the code looks like, okay, this is how it's going to output, like, if we tweak this, this is what's going to happen. So I can see that it could be a really good teaching tool as well. And, and that's because, like, the markdown and everything integrated. It's integrated. Into, like, a, almost like a presentation or like a kind of like... Yeah, I mean, you can't do slides as such. You mm -hmm. can do images, you can do markdown, you can do... Uh, graphs, there's a nice library for graphs. I didn't do any graphs, but you... So it's because the output and the code and the markdown is all in the same file okay. next to each other. So you can have that kind of integration. Brilliant. Um, well, I, I'm actually really excited because I know, again, as, I, as, as a non-data scientist, I was always kind of curious about, you know, how notebooks work because I yeah. know nothing in that space. And I know that generally, like, I think data scientists tend to use Python, I think that's... Yeah, 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 yeah. they use so, Python. Yeah, so that kind of always felt like a big barrier to me, but I am really excited to learn that, you know, again, as two Android developers, that you got yeah. so much use out of, like, doing Kotlin notebooks. And I think if you open your Android project in IntelliJ Idea Ultimate, then you can just add a notebook to your Android project. Oh, really? So okay. if you have libraries in there that do things yeah. that are just pure Kotlin libraries, mm -hmm. you can literally call the libraries that you already have in your Android project. So if you've got like a KMP project that's got some mm -hmm. pieces of the code that's just pure Kotlin, yeah. you can literally call those libraries out of your notebook and mess around with them. That, that, that's fascinating. It almost makes me think like you could even like how uh, for Jetpack Compose, we have like previews where you yes. can get like an in an in-code based preview. Yes. That almost is giving you ideas for like yeah. you could actually almost do something similar where you could do more, you know, more abstract or like yeah, of like yeah, more library example libraries. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, I did not, I did not realize that I was going to be kind of like uh, so so inspired to use like Kotlin notebooks for <laughs> my Android stuff. But that's amazing, Maya. Thank you so much. Well, you should definitely check out Maya's talk. It is here. If you um, I mean, I guess by the time you see this, Kotlin Conf might have been over, but all of the talks will be available online. And yeah, if you're like me, if you're just a tiny bit curious about data science, uh, but you're not a data scientist, or you just want to play around with Kotlin uh, in a very, it feels like very like multi-format, yeah. kind of like very expressive way, I would watch Maya's talk, which I'm going to do. And yeah, check out Kotlin Notebooks. Thank you so much, Maya. It's a pleasure. It's been so exciting. Um, if people wanted to find you on the internet, 
How can they do that? So you just need to search for Maya today, M-A-I-A -A today, and you'll find GitHub repos or Twitter, X, or all the places. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Maya. I, I, I'm, I, I love it. I already kind of got a whole bunch of things that I want to play around with when I get home. Uh, and thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Enjoy the conference. Bye. Bye.